when it comes to value. Perception is everything. So I want to talk to you today. You say, what has this got to do with Mother's Day? I want to talk today, today about a mother's perception. Because a mother see things differently. Did you know that? I actually believe that they have eyes that go round further this way because they can see things behind them that guys can't. Just ask the kids. They'll tell you. But it depends. Your perception depends on what you see. Can I have the, the first next slide, please? I want to show you a few cool things here. Now, what's this a picture of? Some of you will see a lady's face and some of you will see a sax player. What about this one here? Some of you will see a tree and some of you will see a lion and a baboon. Which one are you? <laughs> and this one here, of course, this is uh, a candle, but it could also be two faces rubbing noses. You see, it depends on what you want to see. We all see the same thing, but we see something different because we perceive it differently. Have a look at this one. Thanks, Jesse. You may say, what's that? If you look closely over here, you'll see a tiger coming towards you. Can you see that? On this side? And then over here, there's actually a person's face. Or it could be a haystack in the middle of a field. It depends on what you choose to see. Next one, thank you. These are really cool, some of these. I, I love these. This is uh, chalk art. And if you've ever seen it, it all depends on perspective. But doesn't that look amazing? A little girl with the, with the, with the frog. You know, you think toads grow big up here. Man, that's big. Uh, here's another one. This is interesting because it shows you the difference in perspective. Have a look at this one. You see, that, that's what it looks like from one perspective and that's what it looks like from another. You see, so in the mind of the artist, they have to see things from a different perspective. And uh, the snails grow pretty big up here as well. See, perception's a funny thing. It allows you to see what you decide rather than what is actually there. It enables you to see the good when others see the bad, to see the positive when others see the negative, to see what's possible where others only see the impossible, to see potential where others only see failures. And that's what mums are good at. They're really good at seeing potential in their children when others only see failure. It's one of the great gifts of motherhood. A mother's love colours how she sees her children. In fact, she often sees her children value in her children when others do not. A recent psychological article on the role of mothers found that most mothers should in fact be called the mother of all heroes. Because when they did this survey amongst thousands of people in the United States, it was not presidents, singers and sports people who were the actual heroes in people's minds and eyes. It was mothers. And so many people say, for example, uh, um, yeah, I'm getting to that in a minute. Okay, so many people say that their mums are important to them because a mother seems to perceive things in a way that, that they do not. George Washington, many other famous people have said, the reason I am who I am today is because of my mother. And God is in the business of seeing, he's perceiving value in people's lives. You look at yourself on the outside and you might see a failure. You might see someone who's not worth anything. You might look at it and say, well, you know, I'm not really that important. Some of you have failed again and again and you fall down in the same sin over and over again. But God looks straight through that and he sees your potential. He sees who you could be, who you, who you could be the best you that you could be. Do you remember when Samuel goes, to, uh, goes down into to, um, Israel and he's looking for a king to anoint and he goes to this particular family in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 6. And it says this, when, I came, when they came, I looked on Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, listen to this, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees, not as man sees, the Lord looks on the, sorry, man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. And mothers too can see past the outward appearance and look on your heart. And I guarantee you there are, there are people sitting here in this room today because their mothers believed for them, because their mothers stood in the gap for them, because their mothers saw something that others did not. So what is it that makes a mother's perception so unique? First of all, mothers defend and protect. In Judges chapter 5 verse 7, now I read this verse this week, 
Interesting verse. In Judges chapter 5, the nation is in disarray. They're being attacked by all of these, these hordes of, of people. And then it says this in verse 7 of chapter 5 of Judges. The villages ceased in Israel. They ceased to be until I arose, Deborah, I arose as a mother in Israel. And what you can, you can hear the tone of her voice. I've had enough of these guys. I'm going to rise up and take these guys on. And Deborah did that. She was a mother in Israel. Mothers experience spiritual victory in their unique role in raising children to submit to God's kingdom and the battle forces of darkness in his name. You can just sense in that verse, I was a mother in Israel and I rose up. And you can just sense that she is saying, I love my people and I love my children and I've had enough of this. How many of you mums have said that? Maybe your kids are, are wrapped up in drugs or sex or something, something that's destroying them and you, know, and you reach the point, you go, you know what, I'm done. I've had enough of this. And you dig your heels in because you love your children. Mothers fiercely defend and protect their children. I mean, think about it. You might get away with attacking them. You might even get away with attacking their husbands. But there's no way they'll let you get away with attacking their children. Am I right? Because mothers defend their kids. They'll do anything for them. Look at the Canaanite woman in Matthew chapter 15. It says this, Behold, a Canaanite woman. Now, Canaanite was, was, not, a, was not a Jew. They, they, were, they were very much the pagans of the day. A Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. So she, went to, she took a chance and went out in front of everybody and cried out, have mercy on me, have mercy. My daughter is oppressed. She's sick. She's a, oppressed by a demon. Then Jesus said in verse 25, he tested her faith. It says this, she came and knelt before him saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. In other words, he's saying, I came to the Jews. You're not a Jew. It's not right that I should go to you before them. Now, he was testing her in this. Listen to what she said. She said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And Jesus answered her. Now, you can see a smile on Jesus' face here. Jesus answered her and said, oh, woman, great is your faith. Be it done as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. See, that was a mum that didn't give up. That was a mum who faced social you know, injustice, who, who was from the wrong side of the tracks, who people looked down on, someone who people said, well, you're, you're a failure, you're just a pagan. But she didn't give up because her daughter was sick and she would not back down. She tenaciously hung on and Jesus rewarded her faith. See, some of you mothers here have prayed and witnessed your children, to your children for years. But I want to urge you this morning, mothers, don't give up on your kids. Some of you here, look, you know, your kids are, are out of control. They're doing their own thing. They've walked away from, from common sense and all that sort of stuff. Maybe walked away from God. Don't give up on your kids. Don't give up on them. Because that woman kept believing. In fact, Galatians 6 verse 9 says this, Let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap, if we do not give up. If we do not give up. Let us do good to everyone, especially to those who are of the household of faith. If they're in your household, I believe you've got the right to pray for them and believe for them to come through for Christ. Do I hear an amen to that? The second thing is mother's comfort. Isaiah 66, 13 says this, As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Mother's comfort. I mean, think about it. Mothers seem to feel the pain and struggles of their kids more than others. And they long to bring them comfort. If you have a little child running around and the child falls over, hurts himself, grazes their knee... What's the first word out of their mouth? Other than, ouch! Mom! You know, kids, I, I find this, even with our grandkids, when they're not well, they don't want me, pa, they don't, 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 don't want the grandparent, they want mum. They always want mum. Because there's something in, in a woman that responds to that. Mother's comfort. Isaiah 49, 15 says this, Can a woman forget her nursing child that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget you, but yet I will not forget you. Behold, that God says, I have engraved you on the palm of my hand. Your walls are continuously before me. So God's saying, you know, mothers who love their children might forget them at some point, but I will never forget you because he is more faithful than anyone else. The third thing is mothers provide wisdom. Sometimes unsolicited, I might add. But mothers are always keen to offer their wisdom. How many of you have had the experience of saying, of mum saying, 
Da 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 da. You go, yeah, I know. How many? Put your hand up. Just only that. Come on. Your mother never gave you a, a dose of wisdom. Wow. I've got the most godly church in the world. I can't believe it. <laughs> Proverbs 31 says this about the, the, the uh, wonderful wife and mother. Strength and dignity are her clothing and she laughs at times to come. She opens her mouth and wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well into the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. Mums provide wisdom for all of us in our lives. So I thought, I did a little bit of research, I thought I'd return the favour and offer a little bit of wisdom to you mothers, okay? Oh, it's a brave man standing before you. Here's some wisdom, I, that I researched this, it's not my wisdom, you can rest easy. Silence is golden, unless you have kids, then it's just suspicious. The quickest way for a parent to get a child's attention is to sit down and look comfortable. Is that true? Yeah. This is from David Frost. I like this one. Having one parent, ma oh, sorry, having one child makes you a parent. Having two makes you a referee. <laughs> Teach your kids to spend more time annoying each other so that they will have less time to spend annoying you. <laughs> there is wisdom in this. The sole purpose of a child's middle name is so he can tell when he's really in trouble. <laughs> How true is that? And if you have older kids, I know some of you have older kids, this, this is a good modern one for you. If you don't know where your children are in the house, turn off the Wi-Fi and watch them slowly appear. <laughs> yes. And then from Dorothy Parker, a, a, a fine pearl of wisdom to finish. The best way to keep children at home is to make the home atmosphere pleasant and let out the air in their tyres. <laughs> Mothers provide wisdom for their children, if only they would listen. Deuteronomy 6 verse 6 says this, And these words I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk about, of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise. God is saying, put the word of God in your heart and teach it to your children. Because they need to hear this wisdom. The next thing is that mothers are role models. Now, I stand here today because I had a praying mother. I hope to bring her up in the next few weeks if I can. She's 89. Uh, is 89, I think, next birthday, isn't she? Or near enough. Anyway, she's pretty old. Um, but I am here today because she's a praying mother. When I was young and, let's say, boisterous, um, she prayed and believed for me, and she was a, an example of a godly woman. Christian mothers tend to be a moral compass and a role model for their children. As I said before, George Washington said, all I am I owe to my mother. And I believe that uh, Donald Trump said something similar. You know, he, he owes everything he has to his mother. Stevie Wonder, uh, the musician, said his greatest teacher was, was his mother. See, most sons and daughters look to their mother for stability and as an example. Now, you may not have had a great mum, but I tell you, there are people in this church who would love to be a substitute mum for you and would be greater. So, so some of you older ladies, I want to encourage you, get together with some of the younger mums and speak into their life. Because some of these mums didn't have great mums. Some of these kids didn't have great, great you know, parenting. But you have the opportunity to be that great influence in their life. There are good mums up, out there. And there's many here that you can speak to. 1 Peter 3 uh, verse 3 says this, and it talks about Christian women, says this, Let not your adorning be external, the braiding of hair, the putting on of gold jewellery, or clothing to wear. But let your adorning be hidden, the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in God's sight. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves. So see, the thing is, you can look real good on the outside and be a really rotten person within. What God is saying here is be a beautiful person within. And, you know, sometimes that is reflected to, through to your, you know, your external uh, being as well. I remember being on tour one time with Bill Newman up in the far north Queensland. And we had a lady who uh, owned the motel up there. She came to service our dinner every night of the crusade. And she was mean. I mean, she was really, like, she just looked like, 
like she'd been baptized in lemon juice. She was just <laughs> mean. I mean, she was miserable and she'd come and she'd thump stuff down in front of you. And, and, and you'd say, excuse me, have you got any salt? Yeah, what do you want? You know, that sort of stuff. You know, it's typical Australian sort of serving characteristics. <laughs> no, look, it is true. It is true in some places. Anyway, she was really mean. But I noticed that um, Bill... He, he started to speak to her a little bit and then he started to write little notes on the, on the serviette when we were done thanking her for the meal that she provided. And then he, he picked a few little flowers on his way back in and offered it to her. And I tell you, by about day three, she, her face shone. Her face just beamed because nobody was ever kind to her, right? But her face absolutely beamed. She, she, she just suddenly came alive all of a sudden because someone loved her. So, you know, be that person, be the good person on the inside and bless others around you. Finally, mothers inspire and believe. Mothers generally believe the best for their children. Uh, a Facebook executive, Cheryl uh, Sandberg, said this, my mother raised me and my sisters to, to believe that we could do anything and we believed her. And I think, you know, mothers always believe in their kids. Mothers inspire. They see through the flaws in their kids and they see that they could be someone great. They believe the best for them. I re remember reading about Ted Bundy's mother. Now, Ted Bundy was a notorious serial killer, and she never believed that he'd committed any of these murders till he actually confessed to her face as he was facing execution. But up until that moment, she said, well, it couldn't be. My boy wouldn't do that. He couldn't be him. She always believed the best. She never stopped loving him. So... Remember, God said there was a despondent group of exiles that were in Babylon or on their way to Babylon. They, they were messed up. They'd been taken exile. They were, they were downtrodden. They were miserable. And God said this to them, and it reflects the heart of a mother. He said this, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And how many of you mums want that for your children? You want to give them a hope? and a future. You want them to prosper. No one sits, no mother I know sits there and says, gee, I hope my, my kid grows up to be a drug addict, or, or I hope my kid grows up to be a burglar. No one says that. Maybe a burglar does, but no one else. Because you want your kids to be something incredible, don't you? Don't you want your kids to be someone amazing? To maybe play a violin like, uh, like Hayden played earlier, or maybe, maybe be a prime minister, Maybe not. <laughs> you never know. What mum doesn't want their child to prosper and make good? We want the best for our children. And we feel so let down when they turn away. We want them happy. We want them successful, prosperous. But most of all, we want them walking with Jesus, don't we? It's what we want most of all. We want to spend eternity with our kids, with our grandkids, with the people we love. I mentioned earlier that our very good friend, uh, we love him so much, Dave, is about to be ushered into eternity. It makes you stop and think. This life that you're living will be over just like that. And eternity will roll out and eternity is a long, 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 infinite time. And I believe that now is the time we need to get this right. Uh, John said in the book of 3 John, verse 4, he said this, I have no greater joy than to hear my children are walking in the truth. And if you want to bless your mum this week, on Mother's Day 2022, if you want to bless her, you start walking in the truth. Because nothing will bless her more than that. So we want to pray for our kids. Coming up, that's what we're going to do. A Mother's Day, you know, this, this, this Mother's Day, mums, you're going to get some presents. You're going to get chocolates. You're going to get, you know, some lovely gifts. You know, maybe breakfast in bed or a nice shirt or a nice, you know, ornament or something like that but the greatest gift you can receive is to have your children and your grandchildren walking with God to have them accept Jesus Christ as their Lord isn't it that's the greatest gift that's the gift that lasts forever flowers fade chocolates get consumed especially in my house but someone who gives their life to Jesus that lasts forever that is eternity right there it's the gift that gives on it keeps on giving forever. So today, I want to pray for that. And I want to encourage you mums to never, never, never give up on your kids. However estranged you might be, however mad you might be at them, however disappointed you might be in them, 
Decide now you will never, never, never give up on them. You feel like it at times, but I want you to promise me today you won't because God honors those promises. Pray every day for them. Believe for them. Trust God for their salvation. Romans 10, Paul writes, Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God is for them that they may be saved. That was his heart's desire for his people. What about for your clan? And yes, it'll probably take longer than you want. Sometimes it takes a really long time. But giving your heart to Jesus Christ is the most important thing <clears throat> that you can do in your life. I was with my auntie one day. In her final moments of life, she was in, she was in a hospital just up here at Nambour. And I went in there and I held her hand. Now her whole life had not been a, a real testament to joy. She'd been quite miserable most of her life. She'd attacked my family and my, my dad in particular when he was doing the right thing. And so there was a little bit of harshness, a little bit of bitterness that was felt there. I went in and sat at her bed. And she couldn't speak. She'd had a stroke. And I remember holding her hand. I said, have, I said, have you ever asked Jesus into your life? She said, no. I said, because I want you to be in eternity with me. I want you to be in heaven with me. Are you willing to ask him into your life now? She nodded her head like that. I said, listen, grab my hand, squeeze once for yes, twice for no. Do you ask Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior? She squeezed, squeezed once. Do you turn away from your sin? She squeezed once. And I led that lady through to the Lord right there in that hospital bed up here at Nambour. And a couple of hours later, she was in the presence of God. You see, it is never too late. But don't leave it too late because you don't know what's coming. 2 Peter 3 verse 9 says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises. Some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all, that all, that all should come to repentance. If you are sitting in this room or listening online and you are one of those children or grandchildren who have failed to repent, who have said, no, I'm not going to honour my mother and her, her request for my life, I'm just going to do my own thing, then I want to give you a chance right now to get it right. Some of you have, have, have asked Jesus into your life, you know you're a Christian, but you haven't been walking with him. If you've been walking away from Christ, if you've been turning to the, to the left or to the right and not walking with him, I want to give you a chance this morning. Before we pray for our kids, I want to give you the opportunity to get right with God. You want to make your mum happy? You want to bless your mum? You get right with God this instant. You repent right now and, and ask Jesus. I don't care if you've done it before. Ask him into your life again. Recommit your life to him because he has a plan and a hope in the future. Your mum believes in you, but God believes in you as well. Why don't you bow your heads? If you've never asked Jesus Christ into your life, or if you have and you've walked away, this is your moment to get it right. Just pray these words with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I've sinned. I turn away from my sin. And I turn to you. I ask you into my life as my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And thank you for welcoming me into your family. If you prayed that prayer for the first time or the first time in a long time, I just want you to shoot your hand up where you are and put it down just very quickly. We'll give you up. Is there any more? Just very quickly as we finish up here. Praise God. Now, let me read 1 John 5 for the rest of us, especially you mums. It says this, and this is the confidence that we have towards him, that, listen to this, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know that he hears us in what, whatever we ask, and we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. I'm going to ask you mums, which of your family members have not come through for Christ? Which of your family members have either not accepted Jesus as Lord or have walked away. I want you to think of them in your mind's eye now, mums. Because we're going to take a few moments and we're going to pray and we are going to believe 
that God is going to work a miracle in their life and bring them back to Christ. Have you got them pictured in your mind? There might be one or two, there might be more. I want you to just hold your hands in a little cup and imagine that they're sitting in your hands like that. Just a little cup like that. Just imagine they're sitting there. And say these words after me. Lord Jesus, you know my heart breaks for my children and grandchildren. But right now, Lord, I pray for their salvation. I pray that you will break into their world that you will lead them to yourself. And right now I give them to you. And I trust you for their eternity. And just hand them over. Just move your hands forward and just hand them over to the Lord and then, then let them go. Can you do that? Just put them out there and let them go. Because you are not responsible for the decisions they make. They are. But you can trust that God will work on your behalf to bring the people you love to know him. Because that is what he doesn't want any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. So we can't make it happen, but we can trust a God who makes this happen. Lord, we thank you for your presence here. Lord, we thank you that it is yes and amen with regards our families. Lord, we pray for our children, our children in law. Lord, we pray for our grandkids. Lord, we pray that you would bring them to yourself that you would draw them into your kingdom, Lord God, that we would be with them for all eternity. We commit them to you. We take our hands off and we trust you, Lord God. Lord, forgive us for the times we've pushed too hard and tried to make it happen. We just give it to you. But we want to be ready, Lord. If we have to give an account or speak out on behalf of you, Lord, make it very clear because we want our kids and grandkids in eternity with us. Lord, we give you the praise and the glory. And we trust you for the future of our families. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.